welcome everyone this evening we continue our 30 week bible study titled john's gospel the truth now we are in lesson number 25 if you are having bibles please turn with me to chapter 19 of the gospel of john from verses 28 to 30 later knowing that everything had now been finished and so that the scriptures would be fulfilled jesus said i am thirsty a jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssa plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let's pray together before we go into our lesson. Dear Lord, we are grateful for this evening. Lord, you are our Savior. Jesus paid the full price for all our sins when he suffered and died at the cross. Lord, today, while we open your scriptures, allow, your, allow our hearts and minds to listen to your truth. We pray this in Jesus' magnificent name. Amen. This year, Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day fell on the same day, that is on February 14th. At first glance, these two days could not be more different. Both Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day present visions, visions of the meaning, meaning of life, while Valentine's Day often focuses on the romantic affection between individuals. Ash Wednesday reminds us that God is the lover of our soul. Jesus said in chapter 13, as I have loved, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And in chapter 15, love each other as I have loved you. A greater love has no one, no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. The love exemplified by the love exemplified, exemplified by Christ on the cross surpasses the expressions of love typically celebrated on Valentine's Day. We come today to one of the most heart-rendering sections of the scripture, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are reading the supreme expression of God's love for the world and the supreme display of humanity's sin and it should give us confidence that this love is an enduring love. For more details, let's move into our lesson. So here is our outline. Jesus substitutionary sacrifice, Jesus authority. Jesus substitutionary sacrifice and Jesus authority. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Last week, we learned at the conclusion of Christ's trial with Pilate handing Jesus over to his soldiers for crucifixion. Pilate's multiple attempts to release Jesus have failed, but the Lamb of God has come to take away the sins of the world and it is the will and the plan of God for Jesus to die by crucifixion. This provides us many lessons for us. So let's move with our first lesson. Jesus bore the full shame of the cross. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull. Carrying his own cross. In verse 17, we see Jesus led like a lamb to the slaughter, just as Isaiah has prophesied. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Jesus is, is not reluctant nor is he compelled. He is carrying his own cross to the place of his execution, fulfilling the foreshadowing, foreshadowing in the days of Abraham when Isaac carried the wood to the place of his own execution. Remember his question, Father, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide. 
think about the parallels between this story and the story of Jesus. On Good Friday, God not only provided the lamp, but also the wood as Jesus carried his own cross. Carrying his own cross. Remember, Jesus has already carried his cross quite a distance. The Romans made the condemned person carry their own cross to the place of crucifixion. And he did not take the direct route. They wanted to make a public example, a public spectacle of you. So you look to the long way as they lead you around the city streets. So as many people as possible could see you on the way to your own crucifixion. He went out to the place. Where did Jesus go to go with the cross? He went out, out of the city, out of the camp, out of the place of assembly of God's people. This is what happened to sin offerings in the Old Testament. They were taken outside the camp or city. Levit Leviticus 4 to specifies he must take outside the camp to a place ceremonially clean. Outside the camp. And with this in mind, the, the writer of Hebrews now reminds his readers. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Jesus indeed was crucified outside the city of Jerusalem. Friends, and what a picture this presents to us. If we would follow Jesus, we must step outside the city. And apart from man-made standards of this world, <laughs> to the place of the skull, which is in Aramaic, Aramaic is called Golgotha. All four Gospels state that they arrived to a location called the place of the skull, which is in Aramaic, Aramaic is called the Golgotha. It was most likely called this because the hills rock formation looked like a skull. There they crucified him. It is significant that the gruesome details of the crucifixions are not mentioned in this gospel. Why did not John mention these gruesome details? Because the focus of the gospel is not the physical pain of the crucifixion, but on the purpose of the crucifixion. The crucifixion was the means by which Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for the sins of the world, your sins and my sins. It was during the crucifixion that the Lord Jesus experienced the wrath of God against us sin and then died in our place. And with him, one on each side and Jesus is in the middle. Next, we read that two other men were crucified with him, one on each side and Jesus is in the center. This was the fulfillment of the Isaiah's prophecy in chapter 53, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. Jesus was an innocent man. He has done no wrong. He did not deserve to die. And yet they crucified him between two thieves as though he were a common criminal himself. So the first lesson, Jesus bore the full shame of the cross. And the next picture, John presents to us to teach us that there is no language God will not use to proclaim the gospel. <clears throat> Pilate has noticed, notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. <laughs> it was normal for the Romans to write the name of the condemned person on the crime for which they were being punished on the sign placed above them. Pilate continues his power struggle with the Jews by placing a sign above, Jew, above Jesus indicating that he is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. But But what Pilate did not realize was this was not Pilate's plan. 
but it was God's plan. Pilate intended this sign to threaten and mock the Jews, but God intended to use Pilate's sign as a tool for spreading the gospel message. This tells us that there is no one God cannot use. If he can use an unbelieving political leader like Pilate, he can use anyone. Many of the Jews read this sign for the where for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. In verse 19 and 20, we read that the inscription on Christ's cross was written in three languages: Hebrew, that is other name for Aramaic, the native language of the Jewish people, next Latin, the official language of Rome, Greek, the common language of written communication at that time, otherwise a business language. Now the question, why three languages? For example, in a multilingual country like ours, in all our public places like railway stations, announcements and important safety signs are made in all four languages. So everyone can understand. Here, we are to see the worldwide dimensions of the work of Christ. The saving work of Christ is not meant just for the Jews. It is meant for every tribe and language and people and nation. The chief priests, the Jews protested to Pilate. Pilate's sign infuriated the Jews when the Jews read Pilate's sign over Jesus. They protested because they did not want Jesus' kingship to be proclaimed as a fact. And they wanted Pilate to write that Jesus has claimed to be the king of Jews. But Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. This reminds us that God is working behind the scenes and superintending all things to accomplish his good purposes. Pilate was evil, yet God used Pilate's evil motives to bring about his will. The hearts of the Jewish readers were evil, yet God allowed this great evil of crucifixion to happen because he was, using, he was using it to accomplish a far greater good. Friend, this should give believers confidence as we face a world that seems wholly overtaken by evil. But no matter what we face, God is still working behind the scenes. God can and will use even the evil intentions of the corrupt people to accomplish his good purposes. We now turn to see in the third picture which presents to us Jesus as our substitutionary sacrifice took on our shame, covered our shame with his righteousness. While Jesus is writhing in pain on the cross, verse 23 informs us, when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment, garment was seamless, woven in one, piece from top to bottom. They said to one another, let's not tear it, let's decide by lot who, who will get it. <coughs> Friends, Private shame is bad enough, but public shame is the most crippling of all. Jesus' death was public, humiliating death when they took away his clothing. They took away his dignity. They exposed his nakedness for all to see. Even though it seemed like Jesus Christ has been defeated by wicked men as he suffered on the cross, John then reminds us that God is still in control when he writes. This happened that the scriptures might be fulfilled that said, they divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. 
the soldiers dividing of jesus garments and casting lots for his inner garment fulfilled the messianic prophecy in psalms 22 verse 18 they divide my clothes among them and cast lots my garments <clears throat> now if you remember in genesis third chapter <clears throat> adam and eve when they realized they were naked so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves adam and eve eve's effort to clothe themselves was a sinful effort to conceal what has really happened they try to hide from god but god mercy points to the day when he will solve the problem of our shame decisively and permanently he will do it with blood of his own son as there apparently was blood shed in the killing of the animals of the skins and he will do it with the clothing of righteousness and the radiance of his glory this takes us to the first principle jesus substitutionary sacrifice satisfied sins penalty for believers jesus substitutionary sacrifice sacrifice sins penalty for believers dear beloved Jesus paid the full price for all of our sins when he suffered and died for when he died at the cross Jesus is the infinite god man and his sacrifice was more more than sufficient to cover every sin of every man and woman who ever lived Jesus bore the full penalty for sin at the scene friend do you see his love for you he is still a question in your heart about his feelings about you what is your response to this demonstration of love will you run to him or hide your face from him will you trust him or will you reject him jesus suffering <coughs> demands a response of repentance and faith from all who hear about the amazing sacrifice he made for you and for me he paid a debt he did not owe i owed a debt i could not pay i needed someone to wash my sins away now christ jesus paid the debt that i could never pay friends this is called amazing grace let's move into our second division jesus authority in this division the next lessons we are going to learn is even while dying on a cross jesus thought of what others near the cross of jesus stood his mother mary the last time <clears throat> we met mary in chapter 2 at a wedding at cana when the wine was gone jesus mother said to him they have no more wine at that at that time jesus told her women why do you involve me my hour has not yet come my hour has not yet come this time mary was attending a funeral telling us what telling us the time has come not a time set by the crowds not a time set by the sanhedrin not a time set by a pilot but a time set by the plan of god the time has come for jesus the son of god to be crucified it is all according to to the plan of god and <coughs> this words in contrast to the conduct of the four soldiers identifies a group of four women who out of love for christ made their way to the foot of his cross 
exactly who were these women john mentions jesus mother first then john also tells us that the sister of jesus mother is present as well if we harmonize all the gospels we will come to know her name as salome next is mary the wife of clopas and finally there was mary magdalene the woman from whom jesus had cast seven demons so they had been with jesus in the joys of life and now they desire to be with him in the pain of death these faithful friends remained with jesus when he needed them most friend we all need and need to be friends like this when jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby at the hour of our savior greatest need during jesus passion most of the original disciples of christ were nowhere to be found as jesus hung on the cross apparently john alone stood by the savior he said to her women here is your son women jesus referred to her as a woman our footnotes in the niv version says the term greek word for woman is not rude but respectful and to the disciple here is your mother from that time on the disciple took her, took her into his home although jesus was under great duress jesus made sure to keep the law of god honoring his mother according to the fifth commandment by making sure that she would be provided for honor your father and your mother friends we cannot find it hard to remain obedient to god's law when things are going well let alone when we are under pressure jesus however kept the law of god perfectly at all points in his life and because of his obedience in all things we have eternal love in him we are to thank him for his gift his gift of life by seeking to keep his commandments repenting when we fall short and looking to him as our model god made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of god jesus continued to fulfill the law indeed he had to continue keeping the law even as he suffered in order to secure the perfect righteousness we need to stand before god friends jesus example of humble submission to his father and uncompromising obedience for the sake of others provides many lessons for us though our obedience and surrender in this life will never come closer to that of jesus we are also called to lay down our rights for the good of others steadfast commitment to god and his plan is more important than any other demand or pressure we face in this life obedience can bring suffering while also producing eternal fruit that lasts beyond our days on earth our our next lesson is jesus became thirsty to save us from eternal thirst <clears throat> later knowing that everything later that is the time period would be those three hours of darkness when the lord was suffering under the judgment of god suffering the payment for our sins notice what happens next as jesus hung on the cross he made seven statements seven different statements which we remember on good friday of of every year but only one of those statements deals with his personal physical suffering i thirst and having done what god sent him to do having cared for the needs of others only then 
thus jesus makes a comment about his own intense suffering the irony is thus jesus who is now thirsty on the cross said to a humility samaritan woman at a wall earlier in his ministry everyone everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks the water i give them he will never be thirst this is the most amazing thing of all that the water of life would become thirsty so that the scriptures would be fulfilled jesus said i am thirsty <clears throat> what scripture is being fulfilled here this was in fulfillment of two messianic psalms in chapter 22 and chapter 69 my mouth is dry up like a pot shut and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth and chapter 69 they put gall gall in my food and gave me vinegar to my thirst so how did the roman soldiers respond a jar of vinegar was there so they soaked the sponge in it put the sponge on stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to jesus lips so the soldiers got the wine took a sponge dipped into the so sour vinegar and put it on the stalk of the hyssop if you remember in the book of exodus it was the hyssop plant that was dipped in the blood and the blood of the lamb was put on the door post now the hyssop is used again for the passover lamb was a picture of christ jesus is the true passover lamb it is only when we are covered by jesus blood that god's rightful wrath for sins passes over us and we will live and in the final picture we learn that god was completely and forever satisfied with jesus full payment for our sin when he had received the drink jesus said it is finished with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit after receiving the sour wine jesus announced it is finished and surrendered his spirit to death when jesus said it is finished he was saying not just that his life was over but that his mission has been fulfilled his purpose in coming to earth and going to the cross was accomplished friend because jesus has accomplished redemption we can be confident that in him god sees us as righteous and worthy of his kingdom we can rest in his grace knowing that jesus has paid for all of our sin when john writes with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit he is connecting us back to something jesus said earlier the reason my father loves me is that i lay down my life only to take it up again no one take it from me but i lay it down of my own accord i have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again this command i received from my father the jews or romans did not take jesus life from him christ voluntarily laid down his life for the sins of the world and also in declaring that his work was finished jesus indicated that nothing more has to be done for our salvation he has fully paid for our sin and there is nothing we need to or can add to his work on our behalf that's why good friday is good it means that my sins have been atoned for and the christ died for me this takes us to the our doctrine of the week justification justification is a legal term referring to god's gracious act of forgiving 
and declaring a sinner righteous based on Christ's sacrifice. God sent his son to bear the just penalty that sin deserved. Because of Jesus, God does not compromise his righteous standards when he justifies a sinner based on Jesus' substitutionary death. God does not overlook sin. Jesus' death perfectly satisfied God's absolute righteousness and justice. So this takes us to the final principle. Jesus laid down his life to demonstrate his love for believers. Jesus laid down his life to demonstrate his love for believers. Dear beloved in Christ, Jesus finished paying the penalty for all our sins when he died on our place. When he died in our place, that means you do not have to work for your salvation. All God asks for us is to believe in Jesus and his finished work on the cross as a sufficient payment for our sins. Jesus suffered before you. He also suffered for you. Friend, remember this. As Friday comes before Sunday, so the cross leads on to the empty tomb. And there is no resurrection unless there is a first crucifixion. So friend, are you in a physical pain? Remember, Christ burning thirst have been rejected. Remember, Jesus was rejected by the world and his own Jewish people. Have been put to shame. Remember, Christ was crucified while almost naked. Have been abandoned. Remember, Christ was forsaken by his own disciples and worst by his heavenly father. Why? So, he could understand us when we face similar things. And because he understands us, we can come to him with confidence. So, friend, fear not. And do not lose your heart. What is happening to you has happened to Christ first. And what happened to him may yet happen to you. Your suffering has a purpose. Your pain has a reason. Your darkness leads on to a brighter, better morning. Let's bow down before the God. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending your only perfect son to pray, to pay for our sin. Our sin stepped in full when he died on the cross. So that we could have life, eternal, abundant life. Lord, what an amazing Savior we have. Our sin debt is paid in full by our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, as your children, give us the opportunities in this Lent season to share this glorious news to others. This is for your glory and praise. We praise this in in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Friends, class has been dismissed. We are going to meet next week at the same time. Thank you.